All right. Hello, Chud Monkeys. I'm Tucker Sucho. Welcome to a Company of Heroes 2 shoutcast. We have uh, Russians being played by Captain Ian. Sounds like something like Captain Eo, if you remember that dude. You probably don't. And Hans Moman. And uh, these are the Soviets up here on, oh, what's this map? Like Fanville Approach or some bullshit? I always remember this map is weird. What is that? My computer's fucking... Okay, so there's water over here, but you don't really have to worry about the water because nothing ever happens. Um, I guess you can blow up this bridge. That's exciting. You should put demo charges on this bridge. It totally won't be a waste. Uh, so it's Soviets up north and then Oberkommando Vest down on the bottom. Um, I know Ami Politai Funk likes to call them the o OKV, I think, or the RKV or something because that's the German uh, way to pronounce the acronym OKW. But we are not... German, so we won't do that. We have a special ref command out for the Soviets, and these two players are very good players. Uh, Captain Ian is rated high on some bullshit, and so is Hans Molman, I think. Hans Molman, I think, has, like, the number one spot on some 2v2 ladder, like, with a teammate, and a number three spot on some other ladder. Uh, team games don't. They're kind of a joke, but he's also got high 1v1 rank, so that's cool. And, um, pretty conservative capping from both players. We have, um, right for the fuel with these Sturm Pioneers, and then the Fox Raiders are just sort of establishing a frontal line. He is leaving, here she is, I guess it's Han Mol, Hans Mole Man, so we'll go with he. Uh, he is leaving these two things uncapped, knowing that he'll be able to come for them later. United States, or Toast, sorry, that was not, that was Reflex called him United States, but um, Captain End is actually uh, Soviet. Soviets uh, being even more conservative and capping these back points with not just the combat engineers down here, but with the com scripts too, so... Um, I'm actually, so I'm, I think I see most players usually skip back points like this on maps because they want to get into the fighting earlier and then later you can always go back and cap some of those um, when you've retreated a squad and it's sort of like not doing anything, especially when you retreat your combat engineers or something. Um, not sure, oh, let these conscripts hop over because this M3A1 is coming up so they can uh, link up with it and at the very least pincer these poor folks videos who do not understand how to retreat that is not the way to do it don't fucking run what the fuck are you doing the pathing in this area is really weird the other day i was coming from up north down here around here and my fucking squad was like half of them were going this way and half of them were going that way is the weirdest shit it's there's some bug or something with the pathing basically in this area on this map so relic should check that out but they don't watch my shoutcast so that's all right um, at one point they did. Maybe they still do. Uh, in the beta. I know they watched my shoutcast because Noun posted something. He was like, Tycho, in one of your shoutcasts something happened, but I can't remember where it was. And then I didn't see the message for like three weeks, so I didn't respond. I acted like I was too cool for Relic, which I am, because I'm that cool. Um, but we do have a fast uh, scout car out from the Soviets, but just one, just the one fast scout car. And it looks like it's going to be a penal battalion scout car, because we have a penal battalion uh, called in to probably be in the scout car, which is a fairly common strategy. You put some flamethrowers on these dudes, and then you run around and you're arresting people. Um, the other option is you do it for these combat engineers, uh, but the combat engineers don't have flamethrowers. Flamethrowers, they wouldn't be flamethrowers for the uh, engineers. So, uh, yeah, and it looks like the Obercommander Vest is getting a bit better uh, in terms of capping. Um, somehow, while I wasn't paying attention, I managed to back cap those two points that we were talking about. So, um... Looking pretty good there. I'm not actually sure how that happened. I guess maybe not actually looking better. I was the right hand side of the map looks like it's more red than the left hand side is blue, but if you count up the points it looks like the United States is actually doing better. They've got the middle VP and um, now we've got some trades on these munitions points on either side of the map. So uh, oh wait, looks like we did go for the flamethrowers here, so not gonna go for the flamethrowers on the penal battalion, just gonna use the penal battalion as a fighting squad. And you notice they are doing fairly well even against these flux creatures in yellow cover. So um the penal battalions, no slouches with those rifles. If you buy them, you can use them as good uh, frontline infantry. If you look at the cost, it's uh, 270 for a penal battalion and 240 for a conscript squad, so it's not a huge difference if you want to go for the penals. But um, the downside for the penals is that they, they throw satchel charges, which are much more expensive than Molotovs. But the upside is that um, you don't have to research. Oops, what do we got? Oh, a Kuba wagon. Interesting choice. You don't have to research the uh, satchel charges, so that's actually pretty good. And, um, nice job getting to the south on this house. There's only one building on the south of this house, so, um, 
only one soldier will be able to fire at you. There's actually two windows, but I guess only one guy shoots out. But it looks like people in the north were also firing out, and there were folks radios down here, so maybe not such a nice job. Gonna take a lot of damage here, and uh, I don't know how we forced the Kubo Wagon back, but I guess it couldn't shoot through this hedge, so the Kubo Wagon was just uh, repositioning. Meanwhile, we have very dynamic uh, fighting over here. The uh, These penal squad, did they kill the Fox Radio squad? No, they're certainly not. I don't think so. Almost certainly not. Um, Penal Battalion did push them off, though, which has given the Soviet player pretty good map control. Um, coming in the north and the south, you watch the map, it's being mostly capped by the Soviets, uh, except these pesky, pesky full screw dudes going right here. I feel like this uh, M3 scout car has not done quite a bit for him, even with the uh, engineers in here. Now it's finally roasting some people, but we only had one kill on each of them, which uh, is not so great considering how long they've been out. He was using it to get uh, some... Uh, map control, which is, oh, oh, whoa, that's a nice trick. Throw a grenade and kill some people if it ain't moving. This is really dangerous, though, using this Google Wagon, because, actually, so, we, we did have a new patch just came out. And um, in the new patch, they upped the Kubo Wagon health from 140 to 190, something like that. Um, so the Kubo Wagon is now more durable, which I think was an important change. It just went down much too easily to small arms fire before you could have a regiment squad basically suppressed by it and still shooting at it and killing it. Now it should um, be more worthwhile. And we have Zipuma up from the Commando Vest. A uh, common choice versus the Americans. Looks like it's also going to be a common choice versus the Soviets, which makes sense if they're going to go uh, for this sort of scout car thing, because the Puma will shut this down. No problem. What are these fuck traders doing? They were walking up in this direction. It's, um... An interesting choice to get the scout car out that way. It looks like, oh, this is going to be bad. The Puma's just using the roads. These roads are very nice for vehicles uh, to get around on this map, and you can often set up flanks before uh, you get to the point in the map when, or the point in the match when you're going to have AT guns around. He doesn't want to lose these engineers on the retreat. That would be pretty bad. The Puma um, going to have a tough time chasing it down. Um, maybe the tiny little machine guns will do some damage, I doubt it. The Puma's got to get a good hit with his cannon, uh, but it's totally worth Oh, and it kills it! Even the, ti the tiny little machine guns did it, so that's really, really unfortunate for the Soviets. He's also being pushed off here on the right, so suddenly this is looking quite bad uh, for the Soviet player. Going to have to build a new combat engineer squad to tech up at all, because... Uh, we only have tier 1 up from the Soviets, and from tier 1 there's not a lot you can do versus the Soviets. You can buy AT grenades, we do have AT grenades researched, and these will damage the engine on the Puma and make it hard for it to get away, but get away from what? There's nothing to follow up from this. So the Soviet player, having dumped a bit of fuel into the scout car, and is now just floating 140 fuel. So this, I think, is actually the root of the Soviets' issues right now. He doesn't have enough combat engineers on the field to be teching up. His first combat engineer squad was busy in the M3 scout car the entire time. The second one is sitting idle here while he micro some other stuff, God knows where. And so that means he's had to float up to 150 fuel, This having, despite having upgraded um, anti-tank grenade package already. Um, and having dumped, you know, a bit of fuel into this thing, another 15. So that's some fuel spent, and most of it floated. Finally is now spending the fuel on uh, Tier 3. This is coming up later than it could have. We see 37 fuel being floated, and um, could have maybe even been earlier had he not gone for the AT grenades, and wouldn't have had to gone for the AT grenades as early if he had had some sort of AT out, versus this Puma. Um, you do eventually want to pick up those AT grenades, but you also want to rush pretty fast to... Oh, this is also really bad. Um... I mean, nothing much to say there except running through two vehicles with a penal squad just to hop in a building to fight two infantry squads is always going to be a losing proposition. you got to really trust your penals uh, there, and there's not much uh, for that. So finally, the Soviet, like I said, teching up. It's bad not just because he was flooding so much fuel before he finally got around to teching up, but just because he waited so long. Um, to tech up, and it's going to be a long time till Tier 3 is up, a long time till he's going to get anything out of Tier 3. And, um, yikes, we got Falschenmager Doctrine chosen by the okay base. So, um, oh, I'm saying it. I said I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm picking up Ami Polizei Funk's habits. And, um, yeah, so the Oberkommando Vest has been making slightly better use of uh, the resources. Probably this is going to turn itself into a truck, if I had to guess what the fuel is coming from. Maybe we'll get a second Puma um, coming out on the field. What's it going to cost? 70 fuel. So we'll have to keep an eye on this once this gets to 70. Um, I find myself floating manpower as the two new sides, the upper commando best in the United States, because a lot of the um, things to buy with manpower are just infantry squads when once you have a bunch of them you start thinking maybe I shouldn't buy more, but then you buy more and then you just blob, but I don't know. Um, do you find yourself flooding manpower with the new factions? This is going to get ugly for these Falschenmakers pretty soon. Um, it's really tempting. That was a really good grenade. 
It's really tempting to stick around, but these guys cost so much to reinforce that I would try and use them in situations where they're not going to have to take some damage to do some damage. Uh, if they get back and they heal up, that'll be good, but we don't have um, a healing... Uh, oh, we do have the medical supplies, though. Somebody posted on the coh2.org forums that the Overcommando Vest needs some way to heal other than a healing truck, and I was like, hey, they do have a way to heal. They have the medical supplies. Once you get that one on the Stern Pioneers, you can drop these boxes. It's 40 munitions, which is fairly expensive. All things- Oh god, the humanity! The humanity! They're both dancing to death together. At least they died friendly and warm, but, um... Man, what a nutty battle. There's just fighting going all over uh, on all these fronts, and this can be tough to micro, uh, as I'm sure you know if you've ever been involved in these kinds of fights. That was... What is this a corpse of? I guess that was just a thing that was there on the... Was that the scout car? I don't think... Yeah, maybe the scout car died there. Oh, there's fighting going on somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I would try and keep the Fauxian Magers in fights. The oh, this is going to destroy the Kubelwagen if they get one or two hits off with the PTRSs. Uh, but it, where the hell do those folks go? Weirdo. Weird padding stuff. So, nice backing out with the Kubelwagen there, keeping it alive. And also really nice back capping with these Fox Grenadiers. Um, oh, yeah, and here we go. That's what the fuel was going for for the uh, Obercrando Vest player. Uh, it was turning into a Schwerer Panzer Headquarters. Kind of a weird position. Um, this gun... Maybe gonna shoot, be able to shoot and mill. Nice ambush here, uh, dedicating two squads to try and catch this folks your squad and might pick them off on the retreat since they have two men that's looking pretty good for them and they don't even lose uh, either of two. So this is a weird position. Where is the Puma? This is a weird position. A weird position. Uh, this is a weird position for the Schwerer Panzer HQ. I guess it can maybe shoot. Yeah, it can. So at least it can guard that point. Uh, and now it's not as weird a position as I thought it was. So this is an important point uh, to guard. It's a cutoff point for all these things over here. So if you manage to get your hands on this fuel, uh, all you have to do is hold this point and you're good to go. So that's a nice place for the Fair Panzer headquarters. Ooh, button. So this thing is fucked. Really? Really, it gets out. I guess that was the max range on the button. So that was really lucky for uh, the Overcommando Vest. Uh, just a another couple hits from the PTRSs, but it's going to be really tempting to shoot the Puma. Um, it's also, they're also suppressed, and this thing, oh, no, yep, like I said, a couple, couple lucky hits, and also a good grenade. Uh, could have been slightly more forward, but probably expected the folks around here to potentially pull backwards, and so that grenade was designed to prevent that, and also doing some good capping here. So, uh, United States player, or, god fucking damn it, it's not a United States player. Soviet player kind of on the back foot, but now we have the T-34. I was about to say, what's the fuel gone into? T-34-76, so this is, um... Not maybe as good as you might think. Oh, Schumann 42 finish. That's going to be... Um, wait, no. The Schumann 42 is kind of a joke. But, um, yeah, I don't fucking know what these things do. We'll have to watch it. It's it's right there. Um, so versus the Puma, the T-34 is actually going to take... Um, so I should have said this before the fight happened, because like now... It looks like I wasn't predicting it as much as just calling it. But, um, yeah, the Puma can really penetrate the T-34. I think it just ran over something. No, maybe it didn't. Anyways, uh, the Puma can really, really damage the T-34. And the T-34 can really, really damage the Puma. But, you know, if you get some lucky hits from the Puma... It's nice that these guys are getting out full health. Maybe pick up some. Oh, and we got over so that too. So, um, yeah, the T-34s, you're going to have to either support them with some sort of AT... Um, I mean, you can damage the engine, but honestly, that's not going to really help you because the Puma's turret can just swivel fast enough to shoot you. Um, what you really want is the button and the PTRS from the uh, guard's rifle. Those will really help you versus a Puma because you uh, remove its ability to run away and you also build up a bit of damage on it, which um, makes it much, much easier for your T-34 to destroy it before your T-34 is destroyed. Um, if you have an AT gun, that's brilliant too, but of course, to get an AT gun, as the Soviets are going to have to tech up to um, tier... Uh, two, and so if you're going straight to three for the T-34, then that's not going to happen. So probably guards are um, a better choice for your AT. Um, or even just spam a bunch of AT grenades and try and do some damage. Anything to um, make the Puma at least have to run, or better yet, catch it and kill it. So the AT grenades can actually be useful for the um, engine damage. But uh, the biggest issue is that you're going to take damage while you're fighting, so um, as much as you want to stop the Puma from running away and get the kill and stuff, um, your first goal, oof, they're down, your first goal is to make sure 
your T-34 doesn't get itself so damaged that it has to run away, or worse yet, that it loses the fight. So it looks like we might gonna, we might gonna, ugh. We may lose the conscripts in the center. Uh, we had just lost the penal battalion in the, we did just lose the conscripts in the center. We lost the penal battalion in the north, and the guards do push off the, um, vet too, Storm Pioneers, so not, uh, very high. That, and here comes the T-34, I try this again versus the Puma, um, unfortunately it's not aiming in the right direction, Puma bounces off, but the uh, next shot might penetrate, T-34 really hasn't done anything for him, but um, once the Puma and the T-34 fight again, this will maybe get more consequences, see, look, so that's still pretty good damage, it's not like the T-34 is shit versus the Puma, but you just have to be aware of the limitations, I guess the T-34's target priority does not prioritize the Puma, because it's firing at these Fosha Makers, or maybe the Puma was out of range. Nice hit on those Fosha Makers, that's going to be expensive to reinforce. And I don't know what happened to these guards. They were getting shot at by somebody, maybe they were down here and they were being shot at by these Obersodaten, but uh, that's unfortunate that the guards are now hurt because he wants these guards to be in the fight. Whereas the Puma did just buy a second guard squad though, so that's going to help. A lot of fighting here in the middle, and I'm really impressed that he was able to get so much damage in on these Obersodaten. Maybe from the flamethrower was it able to reach across, I don't actually know. But um, if only we had rewind, rewind in these replays. Dota 2 has rewind. I was watching some of the international uh, today. You can rewind those replays as much as you want with a built-in shoutcast. You can rewind, go back in the shoutcast. It's linked to the replay. You can download that shit from inside the game client. That's how you make a video game these days, folks. Not like fucking Company Heroes 2. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm impressed he's able to hold up here versus the Ogre or Soldaten. But it's just going to get tougher and tougher for the Soviets because... Um, you don't want to tech up from here to tier 4 as the Soviets. That's a lot of fuel to dump into something um, just to start building, like, I don't know, tank destroyers or whatever, the SU-86. So you want to sort of stick around here and make your T-34s work, and then your T-34-85s work, because you can call in those, um, and then rely on your guard's rifle and your penal battalions and maybe your conscripts if you want uh, some infantry. But the thing is, like, that's as good as it's going to get, right? You don't have, like, a crazy last-tier infantry unit as the Soviets the way the Obermann of S does have the uh, Obersoldaten, and so then you really just have to hope that what you can do is make your superior armor work against the Obercommando Vest, but then we look over the, the Obercommando Vest, they can just keep uh, teching up, because they don't, like, I mean, they could just keep dumping fuel into Pumas and try and make that work, but no, um, they can keep teching up, and in fact, he teched up to tier 4 long ago, and along with the Obersoldaten, uh, that gets you the Panther, so he can dump his fuel into the Panther, so, um, the Oversaw Latin have some pretty great late game stuff to deal with uh, as the Soviets, and I haven't I, I've, I haven't played any, I think, Soviets. I may have played one or two matches as the Soviets. I've just been playing the other three factions, um, so I don't know much about uh, Soviet uh, tactics versus uh, Open Meadow Vest, and uh, we haven't seen much, many. I haven't seen a lot of uh, matches, because most people are playing um, the new factions. The consensus seems to be that they're OP. Uh, United States is the most OP people think. If you watch the Alienware show match, uh, the whole tournament, and then the show match, the final fights, it was a best of five, Jessalyn versus OMG Pop, and, um, well, I won't spoil who won, but I'll tell you that, uh, United States player won all five of the matches, so I guess I did just spoil it, unless, um, yeah, but, yeah, so, and you can't watch the replays anyways on your own, because they just patched the game, so you have to go find it on the Sunday Night Fights. Uh, YouTube channel, but uh, yeah, United States, pretty good. Soviets, uh, we'll see. We'll see how Soviets are able to do in this fight. These guys need to be slightly to the right, but uh, you know, I'm sure he's busy muckering over stuff. There's a lot of stuff to do with this, this stuff over here. Um, this is gonna get super ugly. Uh, so doctrine choices. Um, Foschemager, pretty, uh, pretty standard doctrine choice for the Oba Commando Vest. Um, it gets you some cool Fallschirmjägers, it gets you the machine gun, which is actually really helpful versus enemy infantry, because otherwise you don't really get a machine gun, you just get the Kubelwagen, which doesn't count. Um, it gets you Fallschirmjägers, which are cool, but I, I, I think I agree with the consensus that they're pretty expensive and they're situational. Like, you call them in and they'll do a lot of damage, but uh, you're paying for the privilege. And uh, eventually, if you check up to Obersoldaten, that doesn't make the Fauschenmagers obsolete. The Fauschenmagers are pretty great and don't rely on this one guy with the DPS. If this guy's like hopping around, then fuck all is gonna happen for you. But um, uh, the Obersoldaten do have virtues themselves. So, uh, yikes, loses one. Uh, yeah, that's the important thing about the Obersoldaten. All of their damage 
What did they just run over our mine? That was some nice baiting. All of the damage from these guys comes from... Ooh, infantry squad down up here. I don't know what that was. Couldn't have been very important. Oh, it could have been. Yes, that was a Fauschenmaker squad. Yikes, you don't want to lose a Fauschenmaker squad because they cost 440 to call in. That's ugly. Uh, so keep an eye on your Fauschenmakers. Uh, what the f This smoke is fuck. Look at this bullshit. I can't see a fucking thing in this smoke. Relic is too in love with their environmental effects to care what the, what the fuck their video game looks like. This was worse when, like, blizzards happened every 10 seconds on every map. Thank god they realized that was a stupid fucking idea and took that out. Pretty much all the new stuff they added in Company Heroes 2 is bullshit. Um, blizzards, bullshit. True sight, inconsistent bullshit. Um, German people, bullshit. They might not actually be new. I can't remember if they were Germans in the original Company Heroes. Someone will have to tell me. Uh, fuck you, truck. I'm a Sturm Tiger. Check this shit. Check this. It's probably not gonna fire. Oh, it is firing. Oh, what? No, no, it's not firing. Well, the Soviets have fuck all that it can hurt this, so I guess it can just drive around and be like, Ooh, I'm gonna shoot you. You better run away. Be careful. Don't stop moving. Up, oh, you stop moving. Now you're moving again. Fuck you. And that killed it. Wow. It hits here. Tank was here. Tank dies here. That's really impressive. Uh, but now. Now we get to- oh man, I'm so excited. Oh, he's got another 234. Wow, this even fucks up to- Jesus, that's bad. Okay, I'm so excited. Check this shit. Check this shit. They're reloading and the guy's like... Puts the thing in the thing and then... He's still doing- we gotta look over here and see the fight. And then here's the best part. Yup, right back in the tube. Awesome. That's some sick ass bullshit. So, uh, if you shoot this while that happens, it basically gets decrewed, so don't... Don't reload near enemies. That's Tycho's tip of the day. You owe me a dollar for that. Um, so no matter how good a Puma gets, well, I don't know no matter how good a Puma gets, but that's, you don't just drive a Puma up around Guard's Rifle. The Puma doesn't have the anti-infantry DPS. That it, oh, shit! Did that Raketenwerfer just kill, like, two or three, Jesus. I think the Raketenwerfer just killed three people with rocket shots. So that's what you get when they're all bunched up and you get a lucky explosive hit. That's how this uh, this game works, in case you're curious. So, Soviet's doing a fairly good job penning in the Overcommando Vest, but this is going to be a pretty tough uh, game for the Soviets to win at this point. Floating a lot of... Jesus. I should go into... Ooh, fuck. The whole squad is dead. Uh, Captain Ian, not a fan of that. Uh, yeah, so this just wipes stuff. So, um... That is so fucking OP. Well, I don't know. What's it cost? 560 and 160. Look, they're dumping a lot of shit into a Storm Tiger. Um, but on the other hand, I guess it does kill tanks. It one-shots T-34s, and it one-shots a guard rifle squad. So Soviets are in uh, pretty big uh, trouble. Didn't go quite as fast to the T-34s as you might have expected, and hasn't been able to take out the Pumas with the T-34s as you might have expected, and also uh, the infantry uh, preservation not as tremendous as you might have expected. So those three things together make it very, very hard to push on through and win versus the Oba Commando Vest. The Oba Commando Vest did have to give up a lot of territory, um, is now pushing back out with the Oba but it's not... Um, a huge deal because the Overcommando Vest doesn't need the territory to win so much once it has teched up to tier 4, once it has got some Obersoldaten on the field, once it's got a Vet 2 Puma on the field, maybe a bit of AT, and mostly once it's got just infantry domination. Actually, not a ton of squads here, but still, um, once you've established infantry domination and once you've got enough stuff on the field that the T-34s are not just going to roll over you, that they have to worry about stuff, then things start to look pretty good for the uh, over, so, over commando, and then they can just dump their money into an endgame thing, like a King Tiger. Um, I might have expected to see a Panther to just completely shut down the rest of the T-34s and get the Puma free reign. Um, we maybe might have expected a Panther Command Tank if he had gone that Doctrine, um, just to um, not have to tech up to Tier 4, but of course he teched up to Tier 4. So that's just that Over Commando have a lot of options in the uh, late game, and if you don't... Oh god, Jesus. If you don't put the hurt on them, um, <laughs> oh come on. If you don't put the hurt on them before that, you're gonna be up against all sorts of bullshit. And um, I like how the machine gun fell out of the thing. Actually, this machine gun stayed up there, but the little tripod fell out. That's adorable. Maybe it's a bipod. I think it's a bipod. Um, 
they have any tripods for machine? They have the huge tripods for machine guns, where you set up the MG44 on the MG42 on the big thing, which is actually how it works uh, in this game, and they have that for the MG34 too. But um, so yes, they did have tripods. I just answered my own question. Yeah, but um, I think the lesson here for Soviets is well, also stop floating 800 manpower and 200 fuel. So Soviet, lot of lot of floaty stuff for the Soviets. I think a more a more assertive Soviet teching and a more assertive Soviet uh, push before the Oberkommando got a lot of stuff on the field would have cleared out. Uh, the Puma would have established T-34 domination sooner. T-34 domination would really help versus the Obersoldaten because the Obersoldaten have fuck all to do uh, against a T-34. This would have helped uh, the Soviet player keep his infantry alive if he had T-34 supporting them on the field because honestly he does have, he does have the, the fuel and the manpower to be spamming these things. So. Um, at this point, I don't know why he's not spending anything. Maybe he's just feeling uh, discouraged by the Sturm Tiger. I guess he's calling in Mark V. I don't know what the fuck he's using that on. Um, but yeah, instead we have the Pumas sort of having free reign. We have the um, Obermann Vest happy to tech up to a Sturm Tiger even despite not having much of the map. And this is gonna be bullshit! Hmm. Hmm. And then it's like, oh, 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 we can, we can use this. We can secure this for the Fatherland. Looks, he looks funny carrying that big gun. Secure this for the Fatherland. Take the other thing. Um, whatever. So, yeah, here's what happens when you float a lot of stuff. You can call in a guard's rifle and two fucking tanks, so it might be too little too late. Uh, or it might be what it takes to push back, because if uh, we look at what the Obersoldaten, or the Obercommander Vest does, yeah, not a ton of stuff. There's a Puma with Vet 3, so that's going to be a kind of a bitch to kill. Battle, hardened crews, improved vehicle mobility, and vehicle nobility, and uh, weapon for sure, profession, whatever. And so that's going to be a bit of a bitch. And then the uh, Obersoldaten have Vet 2, but I don't know, you can you can clear these things out with two fucking T-34s. Like, look at that. Well, that didn't kill anything. That, neither did that, but here we go. Here we go. How much damage is the Puma going to do to the front of a T-34? 85. Whoa, talk about how much damage a T-34-85 is going to do to the front of a Puma. All the damage. Every damage. But now the fuck! Jesus. That was nuts. Um, this thing's actually doing good damage. These guys have a PTRS. It's just a shit show. Um, don't shoot the Sturm Tiger. I guess he can't really help it because he's giving it move orders, so it's gonna shoot whatever it wants. This could be like, look, I know what you want, dead. The Sturm Tiger. Oh, taking out tier 4 would actually not be a bad idea, but obviously it's too late for that shit. Um, doesn't even get the Puma. What a shame. Skilled crews extend the effective firing range of the Puma. Because as we all know, better people in your Puma makes the gun shoot more far. More far. Uh... Captain in the Z. Uh, so yeah, I would say Soviet player didn't win this fast enough. Oh, play back over quick fucking pause. Okay, good. So when the player surrenders, I can't move my thing at the end, or when they run out of VPs, I can't move it, but if they, like, quit, I can do it. So thank you, uh, everybody who quits in these things instead of surrendering. So thanks for that. We get to look inside uh, the Sturm Tiger now. Uh, if I can get my mouse off of it so it's not selected. Fuck, go up. There we Damn it. Oh, cool, I can park my mouse in here. So anything cool in here? Um, doesn't look like it. Nothing great going on. So yeah, I think the lesson here is if the Obercommando Vest is going straight T T3, T4, uh, skips T2, didn't have any way to heal uh, the infantry, by the way, this entire match, which is a huge downside uh, for something uh, like this. If they're going for a fast Puma like this, uh, you can counter it, like hold it off with the guards and hold it off with the AT grenades until you can get your T-34s out. Once your T-34s out, you need to kill the Puma and establish sort of map domination and then start putting the pressure on, rather than letting them sort of like revel in tier four, tech up to whatever they want and eventually pump out over Sadan. And which you can't counter very well because your infantry is all dead because your T-34s don't have control of the map. And uh, yeah, so the Puma just did too much work for the Obra Commander Vest. Uh, this match versus the uh, Soviets and uh, I actually haven't checked the stats last time I said only 20% of people stick around for this post-game analysis thing, so maybe it's gone higher, maybe it's gone lower, but uh, I'll leave you with this sort of animated mouse cursor of a grasping hand, which looks sort of like a hand running into the ground, and like when it hits the ground, the fingers curl like sort of on their own, because it's like hitting the ground, so it's like someone trying... 
That's what it looks like to me. That doesn't look like a picking up motion to me. It just looks like a going down to the ground and punching the ground motion. So um, in conclusion, to win fast, the video game 